Hey, this is Ginger Rankin with the Zahiri and Company, and I'm excited and really, really enjoying doing the, these videos and talking about the good and acceptable will of God. You know, it took me a long time in my Christian walk before I would come to a place where I would learn this, that God has good for his people, that that goodness that he has for us is the only thing to God that is acceptable for us. Jesus gave his life so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And when I began to learn this, I got so thrilled, so excited, so humbled. Uh, it, it just totally changed my view of God <clears throat> open the doors for me to actually allow the Spirit of God to come in and work in my life because I was no longer afraid of Him in a bad way, in an intimidating way, where I couldn't draw nigh unto Him and He could draw nigh unto me. You know, James 3 tells us that. Draw nigh unto Him and He will draw nigh unto you so many scriptures that I didn't have knowledge of. Um, you know, now we come boldly before his throne of grace, Hebrews 4, in our time of need. God is good. And when we know, and when we get that ingrained in us, then we won't have a problem coming to a loving Heavenly Father who's not there ready to beat us up or send us to hell every time we uh we sin now he said in jesus christ we if we sin we have an advocate with the father he's our mediator first john and if we run to him right away and say father forgive me of of this sin he said that in christ he forgives us immediately washes our sin away, cleanses us from unrighteousness, and we move on. You know, all of these are the good and acceptable will of God through what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary on our behalf so that we can come and we can partake of what the Bible calls the divine nature. And Jesus paid the price for us to be a partaker of all of God's goodness. And you know, God is so good to us that he gave, a, gave fallen man this word to go by so that we could come to know the truth. And the truth, Jesus said in John 8, if we continue in his word, we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. And that is what makes us his true disciples. I just, I just love it, love it, love it. And it has changed my life so much. I am not the same person today that I was 37 years ago when the Lord revealed to me, you know, it was really one scripture and that was John 10, 10. The thief comes to rob to steal and to destroy our lives. Well, who is the thief? It's Satan. It's the, it's the one who opposes God, who lies about him continually to us through our society, through this world. And we mentioned that yesterday in our teaching that Satan is the God of this world. That's written in 1 Corinthians 4, and you can go there and read about it. But when I came to learn the good and acceptable will of God, here's how it happened for me. I learned that Satan had been robbing and stealing from my life, all of my life, lied to me. Jesus said again in John chapter 8 that Satan is a liar. He's the father of all lies. What does that mean? He lies to us about God. And because he doesn't want us coming to God, he was cast out. And if he's cast out, he doesn't want anybody else coming to God. And so he lies to us to turn us against God. 
So all of our lives, we have been robbed and stolen from by an enemy that we didn't even know we had. It's like marrying someone and then finding out you're in the mafia. You know, God has an enemy. <laughs> we have an enemy. And so when I learned that, and when I learned from Romans chapter 8, that I'm a joint heir with Christ, that everything that belongs to him now belongs to me in him. Wow, I thought, Lord, this is just overwhelming. I mean, it was the best, best news I'd ever heard in my entire life. And so I thought, well, Lord God, you know what? You're not a man that you would lie. I began to learn who God really and truly was. Um, I learned that I could come to him and I could communicate with him and have fellowship with him. You know, Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens his door, I'll come in and sup with him. What a rich, rich, wise thing for us to do. What a, a beautiful and glorious thing for us to do. There is nothing better for us to spend our time doing than making certain that we have fellowship, that we're supping with God. Well, I learned that the enemy had had really robbed from my life. But I thought, well, I need to know exactly how has he robbed my life. I mean, how does the enemy rob our lives? Well, again, he robs us of the truth of God. He robs us of the knowledge of what salvation in Christ really means to the believer, to the one who puts their faith, their hope, and their trust, their confidence in the blood of Christ to be their salvation. I learned what is included in that salvation, wholeness, soundness of life, mind, body, soul, spirit, um, he wants us to prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper. And on and on and on the scriptures go. And once you begin to read what the word actually has to say about those who are in Christ and what belongs to them, oh my goodness, you're going to get so excited, so excited. So I have really been enjoying, like I said already, this teaching, what is this good and acceptable will of God? Now, Satan, I said in John 10, 10 says, he comes to rob, to steal, and to destroy. Now, if we know that somebody is going to come to our home at such and such a time, or at any time, they could come at random time, rob, steal, and destroy our home, our possessions, the people, our loved ones that live in our home. Wouldn't we do something about that? Don't we put alarm systems in our homes? <laughs> yes, we do. And don't we do things to see to it that people don't uh, hack into our bank accounts these days? Uh, so on and so on and so on. You don't want people breaking and entering into your car, your vehicle, so you you do, you have an alarm system on your vehicle, right? But why is it when we think about our walk with the Lord, we don't implement that system in our walk with Him? Because you see, that's really what God tells us we need to do. We need to guard our hearts, Proverbs, Oh, it talks about it so much. Guard your hearts with all diligence. Out of it flow the issues of life. Guard your mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2, and so many other scriptures. Know what is that good and acceptable will of God. Why? Because there is a thief, there is a robber who will come <laughs> to steal from you, lie to you, deceive you. If you don't learn about the peace 
that Jesus left you, if you don't learn about the joy unspeakable and full of glory, if you don't learn about the Holy Spirit indwelling you, giving you wisdom from on high, filling you full, if you don't learn that out of your innermost being will spring rivers of living water, if you don't learn these things, then you don't know what you possess by your salvation. You won't guard it. You won't protect it. And some people don't understand even after they learn about what is available to them, what does belong to them, they don't quite get the fact that you have to guard those things. You have to guard your heart and mind. Oh, you don't have peace today. Well, you know what? Yes, I do. <laughs> well, you're not going to be blessed today. Oh, yes, I am. Well, you know what? You're going to get sick like that guy down the road. No, I'm not. Turn on your television today and what do they talk about? Almost always, everything on there, I mean, it, it's sad to say it, and I'm not anti-television, anti-media, but almost everything through the media today is anti-God. Do you know that? How many sicknesses, diseases, you need this prescription, and if you take that prescription, be careful that medication because it might cause this and that and the other and the other and the other. What about the economy? You know, how are you going to fare? Remember yesterday when we talked about what is that good and acceptable will of God and the definitions in the Greek, and I didn't get to share this with you, but that it, good and acceptable will also means to be well off, to fare well, to prosper, and to act well. Those are promises of God. Those are the good and acceptable will of God for our lives. God wants to take care of us. He wants to bless our lives. And, um, it, you know, we have to learn to guard ourselves with what is acceptable. When the unacceptable comes, whether it's through a thought or whether it's through an attack against what God has told us we can have, we have a word in the word of God. No weapon formed against us can prosper, but we have to have a resolve within ourselves we have to understand that we have authority to stand in Jesus' name. And we have to get that worked out between him and ourselves to where we can begin to exercise that authority. You know, that authority is what we can go and lay hands on the sick. Pray for them and they can be healed. Yes, People can be delivered from demonic oppression and so many other things. Like we said yesterday, out of Luke uh, 4.18, Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, to open deaf ears. Now we're talking physically because he can do that. He can raise the dead, but he can also do those things spiritually to where we wake up to what God truly has for our lives, that good and acceptable, perfect will of God, and where we come to a place where we refuse anything less than what God has specifically told us in his word that we can have as his very own people. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I am so thankful for it. You know, um, in ministry, everything that I have ever done, ministry-wise, um, writing songs, singing, I used to be so afraid. There is no way I could stand up in front of anybody and do anything. I mean, I would get sick, literally. <laughs> and when God called me, to sing and told me he would anoint the songs to uh, use those to bring people back to him, then I, I had a real problem because I couldn't even 
stand up in front of people. And so he had to help me with that. And in the beginning, I did get sick. I literally would get so sick and didn't get to sing a few times. But then I learned that God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And that if I wanted him to be able to perform in and through my life those great works that he wanted to perform, showing himself mighty in and through my life, that I was going to have to yield to what his will was for me. And it didn't matter if that meant I had to put down fear, then I would have to put down fear. Because top priority becomes your will, Father. Not my will, Lord God, but your will be done in me. And so if that mean, means that I have to stand up and sing a song you gave me, if my knees are shaking and I'm going to, you know, get ill, help me to get through it, I can do it because you told me to. So I have done songwriting, um, you know, <laughs> worship, uh, ministry, my own songs before people, um, healings took place, and I've shared this with some of you before. Uh, then he called me to, to start a women's meeting, interdenominational women's group. That was a huge challenge for me, but I did it. Then he called me to pastor. I did that. He called me to write a book. I did that. You see, whatever we choose, when we get in that relationship with him, he says, you know, to, to us who believe, to us who believe, all things become possible and nothing shall be impossible to us who do believe. And if you don't think that that's exciting, if you don't find that exciting, I'm telling you, that is exciting. That is a good life. And it's a life that probably most of us didn't even know that God wanted to be good to us. Every good and perfect gift, James 1 says, comes down from the Father of lights. He wants so to pour into our lives those things that exist in heaven and he wants to give them to us on earth jesus the disciples asked him how to pray and he said this is how you pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven god wants to deposit his heavenly in our earthly in this earthen vessel and there is just nothing more of uh, nothing more glorious than that there are no words to describe what god can do in our lives if we allow him to come in and if we join ourselves and make ourselves one pick this up i mean devour it take it in eat it let it perform its good work in you that it'll change you and you will begin to step in to those things that God says he wants to do in your life. Well, I told you yesterday and the day before in our time together that I wanted to come back and <laughs> at some point in time, but we're going to try to do a little bit of it today. I want to talk to you about being happy in the Lord. And I shared with you that there are so many preachers and teachers of the Word of God who want to tell you that God is not about your happiness. He does not care if you're happy or not. That's the last thing God cares about. That we're called to serve Him, to obey Him, and that has nothing to do with our happiness. Let me just tell you that scripturally, that is so not what the Word of God teaches us. And I don't care what any man or woman wants to teach me. You know what I'm going to listen to? You know what I'm going to believe? 
it's right here on these pages because I have learned that when I listen to this, when I pick this up and I read and meditate on it and I believe what it says, then what it says gets manifested in my life. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to trade that for any man's theology, any man's thinking. And if we do, we will be sorry because we'll miss out and we'll forfeit what God has for us. So let's get back to that happy. And I did go in <laughs> and I did a little search because I already had scriptures that I knew of about God saying that we are to be happy. But I went ahead and did a little bit of an in-depth search for all those happy scriptures. So I want to I want to just take a few minutes today and let's just share those together and I hope you get happy while we're reading all these happy scriptures together. Job 15 says happy is the man who God corrects. Do you like correction of God? You know, we come to a place in our walk with him that we learn, if we're wise, <laughs> if we want the good, that we do have to get corrected. And don't confuse, like I was sharing with my daughter just a few weeks ago, there's a difference between punishment and correction. Punishment doesn't connect with correction. It has nothing to do with correction. God doesn't punish us. He, he wants us to change. He wants us to see the right way so that we can make right choices rather than wrong choices. And we can live our godly life and receive the blessing and honor him at the same time. We're obeying him at the same time. And go and read Deuteronomy chapter 28 if you don't think that there's blessing in obeying God. God wants us to be blessed. In the beginning, Adam and Eve, he created them. Genesis, I believe it's 1 or 2, 26, 1, 26. And he, the first thing he did was to bless them. He blessed them. Okay? So happy is the man... <clears throat> who God corrects. Psalms 127, 5 says that happy is the man who has his quiver full and is speaking of children there. So we should be happy to have children. Psalms 128, 2 says, this is so good. Let's add verse 1 to it. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, that walks in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, and happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. And I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of this. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of your house, your children like olive plants around about the table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that fears the Lord. You're going to be happy, he says there. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's not against our happiness. Wow. <laughs> I get happy when God does special things for me. And he does special things for me all the time. You know, he's given me gifts that I never thought I would have. Anyway. So, happy shall you be when you build your life, when you fear the Lord, and you walk in His ways. Hallelujah. Okay, Psalms 144.15, and we're just going to quickly turn to these. Psalms 144.15, and this is the one that I've always known about, because when I saw this in Scripture the first time, I just... I mean, it just bowled me over for God because I thought, wow, Lord, this is your desire for your people. I thought God was this harsh taskmaster, but he's not. He is not. Let's start at verse 9. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. 
It is he that gives salvation unto kings, who delivers David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children, whose mouths speak vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones, polished after the similitude of a palace, that our garners may be full according to all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in, see, no breaking in, nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is a people whose God is the Lord. So there again, we're called to be blessed. We're called to be happy, to have a happy life, to, to have a happy existence, happiness in our relationships happiness in what we do every day for the Lord. You know, we're doing, we're doing everything that we do in all things that we do, the scripture says, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Do it with joy and not complaining. So happy are these people that are in such a case as this. Happy is a, the people that finds Wisdom, Proverbs 3, 13 and 18 says. Um, Proverbs 14, 21 says, happy, is, happy are those who have mercy. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. The Bible in the New Testament says in James that if you want mercy, you need to show mercy. And, you know, that was something very right away in, in my new walk with the Lord that he laid as a foundational principle. We talked about fear and abolishing fear in our lives as a foundational principle. And this was another one, mercy. The Lord told me, Ginger, as long as you operate always, top priority, this is the way you will walk. Out your life if you operate in mercy you won't have problems with people just always have mercy and mercy will be shown to you and you have to realize that we should be happy that mercy has been shown unto us I mean the mercy of God on our lives should cause us so much happiness once we know what we've been forgiven of and we realize what God has really given unto us in the gift of his son Jesus um, that should bring just ultimate joy unspeakable and full of glory amen but do be merciful with people you know be merciful um, Proverbs 28 and I'm not sure which well maybe this was 14 28 um, happy is the person who always fears the, the Lord, the word of God. Um, not that you fear God, not that you fear his word, but that you have respect for it, that you honor it, that you understand its value for your life and <clears throat> that you honor God by accepting it receiving it and walking in it with joy and so happy is a person that fears god um john 13 17 john 13 17 says uh jesus speaking here he says for i have given you an example that you should do as i have done to you verily i say unto you the servant is not greater than his Lord, and neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. And if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Wow. He's talking about having washing the, the feet of his servants. And really, literally, that's a, a symbolism 
of him uh, daily washing our sins, daily forgiving one another. And uh, we will get into all of that right now. But, but Jesus said, if you see me do these things, and I only do what the Father does, I only say what the Father says. So if you do the same thing, you're going to be happy. Let's just read that one more time. Where was it at? Yes, 17. If you know these things, then happy are you if you do them. Glory to God. Love it, love it, love it. Romans 14, 22 says, Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemns not himself in that which he allows. He's talking about what you're going to have faith in. He says, He that doubts is damned if he eats because he eats not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And that's another whole subject. But he says, happy is he that condemns not himself. So what you do in clear conscience before God and before the knowledge and understanding of his word, then you're going to be happy if you walk in that. If you try to walk outside of that, I've been there and done this, and trust me, you don't get happy. You get miserable. <laughs> Glory to you, Jesus. James 5, 11, happy is that one who endures glory to you father endure um first peter 3 14 says happy is the one who suffers for righteousness um and 4 14 says happy is the one who suffers reproach for the name of jesus christ Oh my goodness, my goodness, and there's more, there's more. Psalms 146.5, um, happy is the man who depends on the God of Jacob for his help. Oh, awesome. Proverbs 29.18, uh, this is the one that says that um, no vision where there's no vision, the people perish. And then it goes on to say, but happy are those who keep his ways. They're happy. To keep his ways are going to make you happy. They're going to give you a happy life. What about, you know, I was just thinking about Paul and Silas. Uh, in, in, in the prison at midnight. And what did they do? You know, they rejoiced. They didn't sit there and complain. They weren't grumpy. They weren't, like, you know, depressed. Oh, God, moaning, groaning. They had the joy of the Lord. They were happy. So, I choose to hear what the Word of God says. And that doesn't mean that there aren't times, again, as, I, as I've been saying, and we're going to we're going to just close out here for today. But as I've been saying this whole time, we are in control of our own life. We make the choices. So if God says, I am to be happy, I have to stir myself up in that. I have to put off that depression that comes to my life. And one. I've known uh, Christians in ministry heads of large ministries and i've heard them say you know the spirit of depression came on me put me in the floor kept me in bed for days at a time this is these are things that happen to god's people and people outside of god on a daily basis at any time it can hit you and you have to learn to fight it off but i'll tell you what people who are on the front lines of ministry People who are out there making inroads, really making inroads, being a forerunner in the kingdom of God, they are going to get hit harder. And it's at those times that you have to choose. I mean, you call on God, you take the word of God, you work that word, <laughs> and you see to it that you get the victory because the victory has been promised 
to us. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to close out with this last scripture about happy. So I hope you've gotten happy while we've been talking here today. Deuteronomy 33, 29. Let's take a look at that. It says here, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Now this is the same thing that Jesus told the disciples when he sent them out uh, before he ascended into heaven. You go forth in my name, you'll have the victory. Let's read that one more time. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O, o people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword and who is the sword of thy excellency? He is the sword of our excellency. And our enemies shall be found liars, and thou shalt tread, we shall tread upon their high places. We shall but we choose. First we have to learn what belongs to us, and then we have to choose whether we are going to see to it that we walk only in that good, acceptable will of God. And it can lay there. You know, I can go to the grocery store and they can have fabulous, fabulous meats out on the meat counter for me to purchase. They can have the most beautiful, fresh, bountiful uh, fruit for me to purchase, but that doesn't mean I'm going to choose to purchase it. I mean, it could sit there and rot. I could go to the store and buy something, bring it home, set it on the counter and choose not to eat it and just let it sit there and go to waste. Well, you know what? It's the same with this. It is. It's absolutely the same with this. I want to turn before we close, and then we are going to close. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Because I want to prove to you here, for those of you who don't know, that it we put these things on. We take these things. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. You take what God has already said belongs to you and you you purpose and we're going to talk about that more tomorrow you purpose in your heart that this is what you're going to walk in let's go to ephesians 4 here at verse 17 um it says this i say therefore and testify in the lord that you henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to, I believe this is licentiousness. My Bible is actually torn here. It's been used so much that this part is torn off. To work all something with greediness, and it's just not good stuff. And he says, but you have not learned so uh, from the time that you heard from him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Put off the old man. First uh, or second Corinthians 5, 17. He who is in Christ is is a new creature behold the oldest passed away all things have been made new we put off that old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind there's a spirit in your mind okay what do i mean by that <clears throat> Well, I don't know exactly what it means in the scriptures because I haven't literally studied it. The Lord gave me a song about it years ago, but I haven't really literally studied what is that spirit of your mind. But I can tell you one thing. 
that when you change your mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2, according to the word of God, and you fill your thoughts with God thoughts, it creates in you a different spirit. It does. The spirit of your mind, that you be renewed there, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Isn't that good? You have to put off. Put off that old man. Put off the way that that man walked, the way that man talked, the way that man thought, the, the, the choices that man made, right? And where he spent all of his time just being so self-centered. He didn't look at God. He didn't consider God. He, he didn't consider the word of God. But now, but now, we're in Christ Jesus. We're no longer Gentiles walking in the, in the darkened uh, mind, alienated from the life of God through ignorance. No, we're educated now, and we know what's ours. So, today, take this little bit and go forward with it. If you aren't already doing this in your life, you don't have this down pat. <clears throat> my prayer for you today, Father, I pray for my friends in this day, Lord God, who are who are grasping to grab hold of the things that we're speaking of here today. I know friends, Father, through Facebook, <clears throat> through networking, who are really they know what your word says, Father. But they're, they're still trying to make it their own. They're trying to possess it, to have it living in them, Lord God. And I pray for those today, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, that I believe that as they listen and share with us here, Lord God, that as they spend time before you and their hearts are genuine, Lord God, give them whatever it is they need to enter in to that abundant place with you where all of these things they actually possess and begin to live it out in their lives. They get the experience of it, Father, because that's what you intend. For those of you who have never asked the Lord into your life, it's the best thing you'll ever do. Your eternity will be secure, but not only that, you, you'll know the living God. You'll know Jesus who paid the price for you to be reconciled back unto the one who created you, the one who created all things. And new life will begin the moment you ask him to be your salvation. We always quote Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, the word is nigh you. Even in your mouth, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So do that today. Do that today. We love you. This is Ginger Rankin with Izzy Harriet and Company, and we look forward to seeing you next time right here on Trunk Treasures.